USS Langley saw service to the United States Navy in no less than three different configurations. The earliest and most mundane of these was as a Proteus-class collier, a class whose most notable feature and achievement was losing the other three vessels of the class, including the USS Cyclops, in or near the area known as the Bermuda Triangle. At this point in her life she was known as USS Jupiter, the ship having been laid down in 1911 in California, launched in 1912, and commissioned in 1913. Whilst a relatively lowly vessel, she was already a pioneer, being the first operationally deployed US Navy warship to use the turboelectric drive, a feature that would later be found in a number of standard battleships. She would also be the first vessel to use the newly opened Panama Canal going from the Pacific to the Atlantic, as previous journeys had been made from the other direction. After a relatively quiet First World War, shuttling coal, cargo, and a few passengers around the Atlantic, she was earmarked for conversion and decommissioned in 1920 for this purpose. Whilst the work went on, she was renamed USS Langley, CV-1, and would emerge in 1922 with the complex cranes and other superstructure removed and a flush flight deck installed, similar to a number of other early aircraft carriers such as HMS Argus. Thus dawned the era of US Navy carrier aviation, both in terms of aircraft and pigeons, who were installed as message carriers. Unfortunately, the flock decided that the shipyard cranes of Norfolk Navy Yard were far superior accommodation, and so the ship's XO was housed in the former pigeon coop, presumably after something of a clean-up. The conversion had seen the ship go through a radical weight loss program, displacement dropped from just over 19,000 tonnes to around 13,000 tonnes, whilst her 7,200 shaft horsepower engines would drive two shafts, which allowed her to maintain a stately speed of between 15 and 16 knots depending on the wind. As a collier, she had been armed, with four single four-inch guns, thus technically making her a warship, these were now upgraded to five-inch weapons, and of course, she now had an air group, initially 36 small biplanes. After a couple of years showing off her capabilities and simultaneously working out what they were, she officially joined the Pacific Fleet in 1924. The Washington Treaty prevented her gaining any sisters as a follow-up Collier conversion program was cancelled in favour of the conversion of the rather larger Lexington and Saratoga. Nonetheless, Langley continued to work on developing naval tactics in experiments and fleet exercises, often having more time for this due to her slow speed, meaning that operations with the main battle fleet were somewhat rarer compared to the two ex-battle cruisers. However, her small size and more critically that slow speed meant that her utility was rapidly running out as aircraft became faster and larger and thus required more deck space to take off at higher speeds. And although she would supply numerous fully trained up squadrons to the US Navy's fleet carriers, by the mid-1930s she was no longer an effective fleet unit and was assigned for conversion yet again, this time to a seaplane tender, but keeping her name. Having gone from AC-3 to CV-1, she would spend most of 1936 becoming AV-3, re-entering service in 1937. And the most obvious visual indicator was the removal of the front half of the flight deck, leading to the re-emergence of the forward superstructure. The entry of the USA into World War II found her in the Philippines, where she stayed briefly before the Japanese invasion forced her withdrawal, first to the Dutch East Indies and then to Australia, where she would be incorporated into the wider ABDA command, largely patrolling for enemy submarines. However, as she still had a fairly large hangar for a ship of her size, she was loaded up with a few squadrons worth of crated P-40 fighters for transport to the front lines in late February 1942. While she had a reasonable anti-submarine escort, this turned out not to be the main threat vector, as on the morning of the 27th, a Japanese recon aircraft spotted her, and a few hours later a formation of escorted Japanese G4M bombers appeared. Despite her slow speed and decided lack of agility, she actually managed to avoid the first two level bombing runs that tried to drop their bombs where the pilots thought the ship was going to be. But on the third run, the Japanese Navy flight officers decided they were simply going to remove the map grid square instead, dropping all remaining bombs simultaneously on every possible course that Langley could take. 
This led to a number of hits and further damaging near misses, setting the ship on fire and causing a number of hull breaches. Initially, though, the tough old ship was still forging onwards, and the Japanese were out of bombs, but as the steering was crippled and the engine room was beginning to flood, she went dead in the water. With 16 men lost in the bombing, the rest would be evacuated before the ship was scuttled by gunfire and torpedoes from her escorting destroyers USS Edsel and USS Whipple. Unfortunately, most of the survivors were then placed aboard the oiler USS Picos, which was in the area, and this was soon after also attacked and sunk, this time by Japanese carrier aircraft, with the Edsel also sunk by carrier aircraft and surface gunfire whilst trying to assist the Picos, resulting in the loss of many of the Langley's crew, along with those of Edsel and Picos. Whipple, which was coming in on a different vector, was able to rescue just over 200 survivors made up of a mixture of Picos and Langley crew later in the day. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.